Five Year Mission, the podcast, episode 16. This episode of Five Year Mission, the podcast, is brought to you by Fansets, your home for all things pop culture pin related. Head over to fansets.com and see all that they have to offer. And also stay tuned at the end of the episode for a very special offer from us here at Five Year Mission. But until then. By now you figured out that this is the Five Year Mission podcast. <laughs> That went well. Yes, yes, we're back. Welcome back to Five Year Mission, the podcast. Five Year Mission, the podcast. We missed you. We really did. We've been you right the- there. We missed you. You, you specifically. You especially. But more importantly, welcome everyone. Um, <laughs> we've been gone for a while. We know that. A bit. We we uh, we did that consciously because there's a lot of things going on in the world today especially in our immediate vicinity. I kind of felt like with everything that was going on, I didn't want to add to the noise. Yeah. And I also didn't want to speak. I didn't want to be one of the people speaking unintelligently about important topics. You know what I mean? We're not the, we're not the experts by yeah. any means. And so it was, it felt right to me to wait for a little bit to do yeah. To, to not just to do this, but also just to get back out there because there were other things that were more important to listen to let than things five year mission. In, let things sink <clears throat> in and also and also let black voices be heard. Yeah. Because what are what are like five white guys talking about Star Trek gonna add to the to the, to the initial conversation while it was at its at its peak? Well, in a broader sense, what are five white guys talking about Star Trek? What does that matter when these important things are happening that you should right. be listening to instead. I mean, yeah, it's it's like an escape to be able to talk about Star Trek and listen yeah. to people talk about Star Trek. But in the end, it's not the time for that. There are more important things to listen to. I mean, no yeah. slag to Trek geeks and rewind and not at all. Uh, all of our all of our affiliate podcasts on the Trek Geeks Network of podcasts, but. You know, yes. Uh, so, so, but we we are back, um, and and in coming back, we didn't want we we wanted to. We've been discussing having along with talking about Star Trek. We've been discussing having some more episodes that were more socially conscious, especially given the the atmosphere of today. So, today's episode, mm-hmm. we are yes. Today's episode, we have invited Please. our good friend Jim Morehouse to discuss with us the D Space Nine episodes, Past Tense Part One and Past Tense Part Two. And we chose this, this two-parter because this, these episodes deal with um, basically oppression, uh, taking people, putting them off to the side, and what happens when it when gets to that silent. boiling point. Yeah, so it's very, it's, it's very much related to uh, what we've seen in our world in the, in the last few months. And so we thought it was a good way to talk about that, but also have, have the tie-in. Star Trek tie-in. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's, a, the, that's the great thing about Star Trek is that no matter which series you go to, there's always going to be, you can tie it in like not every episode, but you can always tie it into things that are happening currently. Yes. And that's, that, that, that's one of the things uh, with upcoming episodes we are going to focus on. Not every single episode, but we're going to start, start, you know, once we start, you know, putting p- puzzle pieces together, you know, right. we can figure out which episodes, what kind of guests we're going to have on to help us further, further this discussion. You know, that's the great thing about Trek is that, it's it, it's always very relevant. Well, not always, but you know, a lot of times it's very relevant. So we forgot to introduce ourselves. I'm Chris. I'm Andy. And we have our good friend Jim Morehouse with us today. And this is our next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do this right now. Go. <laughs> joined tonight by the one the only the guy that fired the phasers and put the ship on red alert on that one episode of star trek enterprise mr jim morehouse from the trek ranks podcast hey guys hey jim it's great to be here buddy yeah good to have you 
been way too long. I hope your guys' quarantine is uh, is steady and safe. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's definitely steady. Steadily bored out of my mind for the most part. Oh, I'm not bored, but I'm uh, I'm stable somehow. We're surviving it. It's good. I was made for this. Never leaving the house. <laughs> I'm all for it. So what are we talking about? What are we talking about? What tonight? are we talking about tonight? Tonight, we are going to talk about probably, at least in my top three episodes of uh, Star Trek DS9, probably maybe even top 10 of Star Trek in general, past tense part one and two, because it's relates to things that are kind of going on right now in the world. Uh, it's funny you should mention that because if you go to trekranks.com, DS9 ranks, it is the number one ranked episode on my uh, Trek ranks rankings. Kind of. I love it. it. I love it. It's, it's, uh, it's brilliant. And like you said, it's so prescient. Yeah. It is a, it, it's, it's one of those episodes where it's my, it's one of my favorites, but it's one of those ones where I can't watch it a bunch of times just because it's so deep and dark and just gets my, gets my hankles up your hankles you know is hackles hackles it? yeah your hackles well i call my dog hankles as a, as a <laughs> you know i hadn't actually seen this in a long time this episode um i, I i've only seen the entire series one time ds9 oh yeah, I know, right? Catch up, Chris. But uh, I went, you know, going back to watch this episode was really interesting, especially given the atmosphere that we live in today, which we'll get to. Yeah. But let's yeah. let's start by just looking at the episode. Um, Jim, why don't you just kind of give us your overall impression, not necessarily a synopsis, but just kind of what you think of the episode and and what are the, the key points you think? The episode, well, I guess it's two part. Yeah, so everybody knows it's a two-parter. It's uh, it's very distracted by Fark's hair right now. Very distracting. <laughs> um, and this is the episode where the Enterprise is going back to Earth. They get thrown back into time, but it's one of these. It's one of the only Star Trek episodes where they uh, uh, go back in time, but it's in a it's back in time, but it's not a time that we've seen. So it's still our future, <laughs> which at the time right. it was recorded was like yeah. it was like you know thirty years. Uh, before uh before i think it came out like 95 yeah so they go back to 2024 they're stuck there and there's uh a lot of poverty and some oppression and there's a race riot and cisco has to take the role of gabriel bell and uh, one thing leads to another and they save the day they get back it's a it's an unbelievable episode there's so much going on they, i'll say this because the thing i think about it is you know, t five years ago, you were feeling like it was, it was predicting what was coming with, uh, with the election and yeah. the, the narrow-mindedness of our current government establishment. Don't care. Sorry, not sorry. And uh, and racism of our, of that of of them. And now here we are, three years later, and it is even. I mean, it's more relevant by the day and kind of scary yeah. in that aspect. You know, you know what I was actually kind of surprised by is that they don't, they don't overtly focus on racism in the episode. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, Gabriel Bell is a black man and he is, he's the one who, um, for those who haven't seen it, he there's a there's a riot and and he tries to, they have hostages and they have these, areas called sanctuaries, which are basically, if you're a homeless person, they put you in a sanctuary. And it's just, it's, it's kind of like a ghetto, really, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you look back at, um, like World War Two, or, you know, when uh, the Japanese internment camps, you know, things like that, it's basically yeah. where undesi undesirables are placed, because they don't know what to do with them. And yeah, it's, it's basically where the homeless, the jobless and the mentally ill are all just right. walled cities just to be out of the out of the out eye of the way of public. and so uh, uh, yeah. uh, under the under the auspices of hey we're putting you there to help you because now yeah. we're gonna we're gonna offer you services we're gonna get you a job find jobs and things but yeah. they just they put you there and forget about you and of course yeah. one of the famous stories of the production is that the these guys were, were working on this script um iris Stephen bear and uh robert hewitt wolf who wrote it they 
And they literally saw a headline in like the LA Times that was saying the if some council or the police or somebody were going to relocate people to a certain block yeah. areas of LA. I remember to that. Kind of just contain the problem. And they were like, wow, this is exactly what we're writing. <laughs> and if you've ever lived in LA and if you've ever driven through Skid Row, it, it is, it's, it's it basically looks exactly Row. like it. It's really, really sad. It's, it's a yeah. difficult, uh, I mean, the homeless problem and the homeless uh, take uh, from this episode is pretty, pretty profound. Right. So they have these sanctuaries and the, the people who live in the sanctuary, there's a, a lot of tension and it kind of comes to a head and they have, there are people that work inside the sanctuary in order to kind of keep order. Well, they get a lot of them, several of them take, get taken as hostages and Gabriel Bell is trying to get, is trying to keep them safe essentially. And he gets killed and that instigates a, a, a an awakening of sorts for people and, and Cisco and, and Bashir kind of walk into this, not knowing exactly they Cisco has a being the history buff that he is <laughs> conveniently <laughs> has this, um, a vague recollection of what's going on and, and, Relevance. but you know, they don't, they have both white people and black people in, in this sanctuary, but it is, uh, you know, it's notable that where Bashir and Cisco are put in this ghetto, uh, the sanctuary, um, Jadzia, who gets separated from them and is also a white woman, f- is found by some well-to-do man and taken to, you know, he's a he's a businessman and, and rich and well-known. And he takes her to, you know, you see this this distinct juxtaposition of the wealthy next to this, you know, this poverty. And what really struck me is this guy takes Jadzia to a, a, like his office, but then later on he has kind of this party and, and they're, you know, they're talking and one of them says like, sanctuaries, oh, they still have those? Like they don't even realize that this is happening. They're They're so, you know, they just put the blinders on because they don't have to worry about it. And that, really illustrates the point of why they have the sanctuaries in the first place to get mm-hmm. these people out of the way. Yeah. It's a, they, they, because you, you guys brought, brought up like, like race and everything like that. I said, as much as I wanted it to kind of have that element, I mean, we definitely got that in like far beyond the stars. Um, mm-hmm. But this is more, more along the lines of like, like the classist system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like basically like the, the yeah. wealthy run, run everything, the wealthy kind of get, get what they want. The poor just kind of swept off to the side and um, forgotten basically. And like, that's the, the, that was like one of the main takeaways from this episode that, you know, the, all these people have been forgotten and, and they can't get word out to anybody that they're still there even. So, I mean, they, they, which is, you know, the reason for the beginnings of the Bell Riots. So I don't want to, uh, you know, I guess we should just have a spoiler alert at this point mm-hmm. because we're going to have to, in, in order to s- discuss the episode, you kind of have to spoil it. <laughs> yeah. We need a spoiler alert. I mean, if you're listening, you know, we're talking about it. I suppose yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. So Bashir and, and, and Cisco are in, in this, this uh, place and they, the, what do they call the, um, like they have, almost a caste system within the dims, the ghosts and the gimmies. Oh, yeah, I was right. going to say, yeah. So exactly. the gimmies are kind of the, the wild cards, I guess. Well, no, the, 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 the gimmies are more like the kind of well, oh, yeah, the well to do. Like That's right. Jobs or they were on their way to a job. The dims were basically like the, like the, the mentally, mentally ill. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. The ghosts were basically the ones there that were just there to kind of cause trouble. The outlaws. Like actual, yeah. Actual criminals that were. Okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, Bashir and Cisco have a run in with the ghosts mm-hmm. and what happens is they get in a brawl and the, and Gabriel Bell, who they don't realize who he is, runs in and tries to help him and he gets killed, mm-hmm. which is way too early. And the, <laughs> which causes, uh, you know, one of those weird things where you're watching a TV show or a movie and things in the future start d- disappearing. But the things that, <laughs> you're watching are still there <laughs> because of a time bubble or something. But uh, so those chronotons, man, don't I know, man. Those chronotons. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Cisco has to take on the, the, the persona of bell, of which Bell-Bell, is yeah. interesting because bell has to die in order to, you know, 
to make this, uh, you know, change in history. So, yeah, because I, because meanwhile, it, like, like after, like after Gabriel Bell is killed in the sanctuary district, uh, they, they flash back up to the, to, to the defiant with mm-hmm. Kira and Odo and, uh, O'Brien, O'Brien. And their ship has lost communications with Starfleet in general because they've messed up the timeline. So then Starfleet doesn't even exist. So it's a a whole butterfly effect. Basically, Gabriel Bell dying without going through with this riot itself and dying for nothing, basically, uh, just kind of set off the butterfly effect to where Starfleet wasn't even created. So it's it's in that whole little puzzle piece. Well, you know what I think... um... You know, DS9 always does did this really well, and that is taking a character that, and usually, characters would evolve over a season or or several seasons. And in this episode, you have characters like BC, who is the main ghost guy, yeah. or Vic, who is one of the, I mean, really kind of the security guards inside the sanctuary, mm-hmm. and they have two very distinct personalities at the very beginning of this episode. You know, Vic is this gruff, you know, only no sees one perspective yeah. guy yeah. who he's like, I work here. I'm in the right. You're in the wrong. This is this is a job. Exactly. This is what I'm told to do. Exactly. I'm just Which, doing again, my job. When, you t- when you talk about depression it, and it's and it's a little bit feels like what you're seeing today, too, with yeah. the authority, with it's a little the, on the, the whole authority respect thing. It's like. The yeah. authority wants you to respect oh, yeah. them, but not we'll get into that. Even, We're going to get into yeah. that. By the way, his name is his name is Vin. Vin. Oh, Vin. Vin. That's right. That's yeah. right. I, I'm my. I apologize. So, but any at any rate, he's very monocular. <laughs> I guess he only sees you know he he only sees this one perspective. Throughout the episode, he kind of sticks to that mm-hmm. until at the, you know towards the end, he starts to he starts to see, especially when Cisco jumps and, you know, Cisco takes a bullet for him basically. Literally. And you, you see his, his thought process evolve. And the same with BC, he's always kind of this anarchist, yeah. but you see there's more to him than just this, you know, guy who wants to cause trouble. So it's, I think they did a, they do a really good job with those two characters, especially because they are kind of, allegorical you know for yeah. some of what you would want to see in a human being you know mm-hmm. where they seem so rigid or so focused in one area which is what we see all the time i mean we imagine that people you get this first impression and you just kind of it just lodges in your head and that's what you think of that person until you see who they otherwise yeah yeah so it's really you know it's it's really interesting and um DS9 always does that so well. Mm-hmm. I think I, th- I think that's one of the things that makes it such a great show is is their character development. But it's impressive that they do it in such a short amount of time for these characters that really makes you kind of see them differently. Yeah, we I mean we kind of set up a lot to summarize that you in this two hours you literally they show you every piece of society. You yeah. have the mentally ill. Mm-hmm. You have. The, the the down on their luck guys who just want to find a job but but can't mm-hmm. you have uh the really kind of uh single-minded cop who's not going to stop at anything you've got a little bit of the understanding social worker who's just doing her job you've yeah. got the 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 ghosts oh, who yeah. are literally like when you watch these uh the upheaval of the last few weeks and again where i you know sorry not sorry not going to apologize for it i understand it because if there's if there's if the stuff if windows are getting broken that's 10 percent. there's always going to be 10 percent of assholes out there who are just going to break shit for no reason yep. but the, uh, but that's the price you have to pay the other 90 percent are there for a reason they need, it needs to be heard you need to hear this that's what the ghosts are it's amazing how it's all there and <laughs> we're literally kind of living through it these last this last month and then you have and of course you have the high society the chris yeah. brenner character who that cares a- he's woke chris brenner was woke by the way <laughs> oh, absolutely. but he wasn't doing anything to really make a difference well, well you know that, he did it's always been one of my favorite things about deep space nine is that they were always so good with covering kind of like all sides of a story 
and they were able to bring in all the all the different perspectives and everything like that but then like kind of it all melded together so well you know i um with the chris brenner character he was you know, I don't know if I'd say he was woke necessarily. He was just, he just wanted to help Jadzia. Like if Jadzia hadn't been there, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have really noticed. I don't think he wouldn't have, I don't think it's not that he doesn't care. It's just that he doesn't, it's not in his sphere of influence at all. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, I, he thinks he was woke. I mean, he's it's <laughs> similar. It's like Jeff Bezos. I mean, yeah. is, is Jeff Bezos woke? Mm, probably not, but he kind of, I mean, he's, I, a, I mean, obviously he cares about his money yeah. and, and he does, and they do a lot of philanthropic things that come out to 0.000 percentage of the billions and trillions of Amazon. But I guess that's my point. I don't, I guess he, Chris Burr thinks he's a good guy yeah. and he's trying to, and, but he's clearly Which, not. He, he probably is a good guy. He just yeah. lives in a different, Yeah. you know, and, and the fact, I, I will say the fact that, when he is shown, he, he, he's shown a little bit more what's going on and he has someone who's a dire- directly affected by it, mm-hmm. that he is more inclined to help because now it's, it's in his face, you know? Right. Well, my, the, the, the best thing about that character though, is that he was kind of like, a when, when he was originally talking to Jadz, he was talking, asking about her, her trill spots. And he was like, he was like, Oh, where'd you get the tattoos? Japan. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, back in the day, you know, I had I had some tattoos. I had to get them removed because of the suits, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, he's like he, he's like he's like the guys that even I still know to this day. It's like, yeah, you know, I used to be punk rock, but you know, then I had to get a job, and then it, it kind of takes kind of like almost like a younger generation that's still kind of like in like the struggle, I guess, to kind of like point it out. It's like it's like. Hey man, you used to be cool, but there's still stuff going on that we need to fight against. So here's what's happening. Do you want to get involved? And then that's basically when he was like, you know, I can't broadcast these people's messages ac- across my. It was, it was basically like a YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it was like a te- television. The, station the network of. is. They called it the yeah. net. Yeah. So he was, uh, a, he was ch- like, channel you, 90 net zero yeah, net, <laughs> net access interface. By the way, just, just so we clarify, every time I said woke, I was using air quotes. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Yes, we can see that, but not everyone can. None of the, n- n- none of the people that, that are out there calling people woke, like it's an insult, go around calling themselves woke. Exactly. Yeah. 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 exactly. Well, you know, I think it's important, important to note also that once Chris Brenner does his thing, Mm-hmm. He's gonna go back to doing the exact same thing he's always done. He's oh, not gonna go. He's not gonna go advocate for anybody. He's not gonna you know give a bunch of money to a charity or whatever. Yeah, I don't see him doing done. that. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Well, here's a question: Would if he if it was Cisco or Bashir that he stumbled across mm-hmm. on the stairwell, That's, does he invite yeah. him back to his apartment? I mean, probably his, not. Probably True. not. I mean, I guess that's fair. I yeah. like to think that he's not, he wasn't just trying to pick up Jed Z. I don't <laughs> think that was the only thing happening here. I think he was generally trying to help a person that yeah. was lost. I, and it, I don't know, man. I'm on the fence on that one. I, I, yeah, you, I, 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 I can argue both sides of it. I'm I just, cannot, maybe I'm, I'm trying to be as open-minded I, as I can. <laughs> I think if, if, if he stumbled upon, you know, Cisco or Bashir or both, I mean, and it's so funny the way Jadzia was sitting there, like against the wall, so unnaturally. <laughs> but, 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 but somehow, right. Disco and Bashir just woke up next to a, like a weird glass, pyramid. like in the gutter. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they, it, I, man, I'm sorry, but if he had come across those two, I think he would have stepped over him and kept going, or maybe at the least, well, maybe well, made right. sure that they were okay and sent them, like. Come over That's, here, sanctuary probably a guys. Happy middle. Like know? he probably would have tried to at least look at him, but he's yeah. not inviting him up, taking him upstairs. It, yeah, yeah, I, I think you're probably, probably right. <laughs> Which, to be fair, that's probably what most people would do. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Most people would just step over him. So I guess he's a step above that. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, you know, I don't think any. I don't think I can pretend like I would do that. So. Yeah, it's hard to. I mean, you know. You don't know until you're in the situation, but judgment call definitely for sure in the moment. You know, I've seen a, I've seen a lot of situations where it looks like someone, you know, was probably in trouble and just nobody's. It's the you know, 
the invisible people. And that's another, you know, that's another really interesting metaphor for the whole episode is that these people were put, you know, the homeless people are put somewhere where you can't see them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. And homeless people are invisible to the general public. You don't even, you don't have to put them away because people don't want to see that. And it's just, it's interesting that they took that and made it so overt yeah, and, you know, added to it, you know, with with just the jobless and the mentally ill and, and uh, a big shout out to uh, Clint Howard. Oh, I was about to bring him (laughs) as, you know, playing one of the, one of the, um, the, the, uh, Oh, the, the dims, the dims. Yeah. Yeah. So he was, yeah, he's always great. It's always fun to see him. And one of his, one of his many Star Trek appearances. And it, yeah. And again, the, I, I think the portrayals here are all really, they're so real for the amount of screen time. Yeah. I mean, he feels like, you know, not a, not a, uh, not a depressed or, uh, um, not suffering from depression, not really? kind of criminally angry or anything. He's just a, He's just an unstable, mentally ill person who's yeah. who can't kind of cope with reality. Yeah, and uh, and I think the way they portray him is is really good. It was it's they, tough they, to see them kind of not try to help him more, but obviously yeah. there's only so much you can do in two yeah. hours. But well, they, they, they even did that with the background characters really well too. Like you could see people just like sitting depressed on a step or crying mm-hmm. to themselves or yelling at a wall, and well, it's just. Like, well, there's your, there's your mental illness, illness right there. Yeah. And I was going to say, well, in, in terms of all background characters, not to change that topic, but like even the guys at the step that where they get their clothes from, they're, right. they're, mm-hmm. they're, they feel super, like they're not just being, uh, I'm going to say assholes, so beat me out. Yeah. They're not just being <laughs> jerks, you know, they're just, they're, hey, this is our yeah. building. We don't have space for you. Get out of here, man. We're not going to fight you. We're not going to beat yeah. you up, but but take a hike. We don't have time for this. Go find another building until they come to some agreement. So and again, every single character like that feels really deep and layered. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like outside, except for the, the ghosts, everybody, it, it, it's a community within the community, you know, right. which is really interesting that they, they almost, they're almost, I mean, outside of just the, um, and I don't know what they call them, but the security that's there, mm-hmm. it's almost like they govern themselves. Well, know? they do. Yeah. So it's it's well, other 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 than like the food ration cards. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, and then they there's uh, Jim. You mentioned the woman who is she's like in processing. I guess I don't know. She yeah. tries to help Cisco. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. And well, and I say help, but it's just kind of what she does in, in trying to help them get a job. Mm-hmm. Um, it, she's just processing them and saying, okay, well, you know, we'll. Sometimes it takes a few weeks. We don't know. Whatever. That's a, you know, she's just, um, she's like that, the cog in the, you know, in, in the machine, she's just, she does, it's either she, if she, and really it's, it's an interesting, um, uh, it's complex because if she doesn't have that job mm-hmm. and doesn't find another job, she will be in the same place where yeah. the people are that she's processing. So yeah. uh, it, I can, and you know, she, um, she has health issues. What is she? Hypoglycemic. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, she has that health issue. What is she going to do if she's stuck in, in this sanctuary? Yeah. So it's, you know, I, I really, <clears throat> you really feel for that person because she's doing something that's legitimately not good, you mm-hmm. know, to these people. But if she doesn't, then what's going to happen to her? Which See, is really that, in- interesting. That was actually one of, wait, one of my favorite things about her character was that I have met so many people like that in real life where they like, went to school and they were going to be like, I'm going to go out there and make a difference in the world. And yeah. you know, and then they get a job and then there's so much red tape and so many different people to answer to and so many rules to follow and procedures and everything that they're just like, I came here to make a difference. I can't make a difference because I keep being held back by this up system that's in place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's pretty representative of, of a social worker that, you know, is hoping I'm mean, sure when you lay this thing out on paper, there were really good minded people who thought, okay, this is going to help people. This is going to be a good thing. We're going to, we're going to get a, uh, a hold on this problem. And mm-hmm. someone like that comes to thinking, okay, I can help. But you know, 
after you're doing that for six months, you just, yeah. you're just processing numbers. So, well, because she, took, she told the one story about the, uh, the woman that she processed who like, uh, had like a warrant out for her arrest for her for abandoning her kid. Yeah. And she was, it was just because she was too poor and couldn't do it. And she just basically had to be like, I can't do this and was just put into the system again. And she was like, I felt so bad for this woman because she obviously couldn't help herself, let alone a child that I didn't even log her in. And I just let her go in the sanctuary. And she was like, and I have no clue whatever happened to her because there's 10,000 people in here and she, she's going to get lost in the system, which again, another perfect allegory for like, you know, people get lost in the system yeah. all the time. Well, and, and you know, that, that, that's a good segue to the one other person that I wanted to talk about or mention, um, Michael, uh, I don't remember his last name, Jim, help me out. The guy that, uh, you mean, oh, Webb. Web. You're, yeah. you're talking about Web. Yeah, play, yeah. played by Bill Smitrovich. Great character. Right, right. Oh, yeah, bad, so, yeah. oh, wait, did he? He went by, did he? Was it Michael Webb? I can't remember. I think, I think it was Michael. I just so Webb. Yeah. He's like the everyman, and he yes. is exactly the guy that anybody could have been. You know, this guy that he's, uh, you know, I never saw his wife. Was he a single? Oh, no, they talked about her, didn't they? talked did. about her. Yeah. So he's, he he's a married. Whole, his whole family was there. Yeah. yeah he's married. He has like kids. Two kids. And he's just all the one kid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he seems, you know, very like this very, uh, you know, white collar kind of guy. And so, you know, through a series of, uh, uh, you know, just by sheer bad luck, really, he ends up he doesn't have a job. So he ends up in the sanctuary. And all he wants to do is get get a job and get out and, and do his thing and support his family. And he just can't. And that like that frustration for somebody like that or anybody in that situation is just palpable, you know, just knowing yeah. that you have value, but you can't, but someone's telling you, 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 you can't use it, you know? Yeah. And I, yeah, it, 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 I mean, cause they literally say he was like some kind of like, he was a technical worker or something. Yeah. And got he's laid not, off at some big company and he's and not cr- up here he's not a criminal he's just a guy trying yeah. to, trying to obey the rules yeah trying to do what they're telling him to do and i mean you're right this is i love this conversation because we're kind of breaking out every single every single character, character that, that, yeah. they've, that they did so well with and he's kind of he kind of sums it all up and when i just i love that moment when when gabriel bell and cisco yeah when they're about to break through on the, on the, the feed, the internet feed and he's, and BC wants to get in front of the camera. He's like, no, not you. It <laughs> yeah. needs to be this guy. Yeah. He exactly. represents this place in yeah. the way that people can connect with. Yeah. Such a good, such good writing. The whole this thing is, is, yeah, this yeah. is, the, this is the every man. This is going to be the most relatable guy. He's a family man. He's white collar. He just, he just wants to work. And then I love, seeing like the line once they went once they started broadcasting on channel 90 uh, just the long line of people coming in just oh. to tell their stories oh so poignant yeah. Yeah. And that's like that's like twitter today if you think yeah. about it it's yeah. like because people are able to get their stories out there in that kind of way it's that's it's amazing yeah, i think that the only difference there is that you know twitter is so broad and you, you get all these little bits and pieces in this situation it seemed to me like this was like a, a ma- it's almost like a major news station that they hijacked, you know? And, yeah. and so I can only imagine that the world would have been watching, you know, which is what oh. instigated the chain, the, you know, made it, you know, put this, this sanctuary situation in the, in the forefront and made people look at it and think this is not good why are we doing this yeah this you is a, this it was basically like the the equivalent of then like a video going viral yeah and and, and everyone's just like have you seen this and it's like of course i've seen this i'm yeah. watching right now yeah which is amazing when you think about it cuz this was what 95 yeah 95 exactly. and all even even the technology the, the technology that they were talking about was in its infancy at the time I mean, yeah. you know, I think the even the internet was not was huge in '95. You know, it was, it was, it was all still dial-up. There certainly wasn't, you know, yeah, it was dial-up, and there certainly wasn't 
any kind of social media. I mean, I don't even know if they yeah, have my 40 hours billboards. <laughs> yeah, right. AOL. <laughs> so, I mean, I, it's, it's really interesting that they, uh, the, you know, they were doing this for the future and it, everything is like, so it's, 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 it's crazy. Incredible. Well, it and you know, really so, is. which <clears throat> brings me to the last thing Bashir says in the, epi- in, in part two, and he says, now seeing the 21st century, I, how could they have let it get like, you know, how could they let, have right. let it get so bad? And Cisco's like, I, I, I wish I could tell you, you know, I don't know. And, and now we know. And now we know. <laughs> <laughs> but but we and that's the thing though, you know. I I sit and I think about where we are today. And I'm just like ha- and I know how we got here and I still don't understand how we got here. Yeah. It still doesn't make any good sense and it's just crazy to me. Yeah, there's there's, there's, there's been been a meme going around the past couple of days. It's like it's like you know what? Every single Star Trek series has skipped over the most important part, how how we got better. I mean, yeah, right, like right. the rise a little bit, and then we've seen the aftermath, mm-hmm. but we haven't seen like this is this is the moment. This is how we all could like a like a whole like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure thing. Like all of a sudden, the Wild Stallions appeared with the greatest song in the world, and all of a sudden, world peace is there. It's like, do we have to have like Vic Fontaine sing a song? Like as a hologram, that as a, as a as a real life person, I guess would would have been about the point. Is like, is that what it's going to take? I don't know. It's going to take those. It's, we, we need the Vulcans. We need the Vulcans. <laughs> so about forty years away. <laughs> we need to become closer and closer to being warp capable because that seems like a pretty good turning point. That would be that would be good. Uh, yeah, of- yeah, but it, I, I think it starts. It starts with what's happening, though. I yeah. mean, in our world today, we're seeing, I mean, people are fed up, man. Like, oh. people are just f- tired of being stepped on. Yeah. And, you know, I being a white male, do All not... three of us right now. Right. Yep. Do not experience th- that to the degree that someone who would, you know, a black male would, for example. Yeah. Um, no, it's, so it's I measurable can, the level we face compared to, to what yes. we know yeah. that uh, people of color and black people in particular, black people. Exactly. Facing, it's, it's absolutely. So I can't. So difficult to watch. Yeah. And I can't, I can't, I can't speak to that in an intelligent fashion uh, from a point of understanding. Yep. I can advocate for it all day oh, and, I, yep. and I will. Yep. Yeah, we, we all do. But what I can, you know, what we, what we can talk about, I think is, uh, you know, what we see in this episode with the, the authority mm-hmm. and how, um, you know, how abusive it is and how it relates to what we see and it's, you know, you have the guy, what was Vin, Vic, Vin, Vin, Vin yeah, Dick, so, Dick Miller. Yeah. Vin's partner was like the good guy, right? He just wanted yeah. to get home to my wife. And kids. Just yeah, wanted right. to get home to his wife and kids. But see, he is the guy. So he knows how abusive Vin is mm-hmm. and he's standing next to him. And all he wants to do is get back to his family and not doing a thing to try to mitigate what Vin is doing. Precisely. And that's, yep. to me, that is one of the biggest issues that we face and that we have good people who are working with bad people who do yep. nothing exactly. to try to change what's going on. And that oh, is a problem. I, I get it. It's, it's, it's a hard thing to do. You have to think of these, and I'm speaking of authority police officers at the, right now, and you have Politicians. to think, what? And, and, and also politicians, politicians, military, any any kind of authoritative tier, yeah, teachers even, and these, and especially in in military and in and and uh, law enforcement, you have to rely on the people around you. You know, you yeah. have to rely on the people that you work with. 
It's a whole brotherhood. Well, I was thinking about it today, though. You know, there are cops who are afraid to step up against other cops. Mm, When you think about it, because they're afraid that if they do that, and this is just my perspective, this could be totally wrong. This is based on what I've read and what I've heard. Um, You know, there is that brotherhood. But how can you trust somebody? I mean, it's all based on trust. How can you trust somebody that will put their knee on somebody's neck? For eight minutes, you know? and six seconds. And you don't do anything about it? You know, how can you trust that person? You can tell yourself all day that this is because, you know, I, we're, it's a brotherhood and I trust this person. Well, do you trust this person who's doing these horrible things and you can't do anything about it? That, I have a problem with that, you know? Huge problem. And, and you, were, you said sometimes it's tough in the moment if you're working with people and you, maybe you don't see it. And I, I, I can get that to a certain level. It, I, I can't imagine yeah. myself in, in that situation. But the thing that really pisses me off is, okay, so how about three days later when you have the full context and you're watching the video, how about a couple of cops step up and call yeah. it out for what it is? Yeah. Because there's like, no, we're not fucking around here. It's yeah. pretty obvious what's happening yeah. and it's not just that one there are literally hundreds of these oh, well, and the, there's, and there's hundreds and every probably i mean literally thousands yeah uh, it's, it's, it's so infuriating that they that there's uh, that there's this brotherhood it, I just, it's just alpha male bro protecting i and, can't stand it I, and that, I that's like it. That, that's like my big thing right now is that like everybody hears like the term like defund the police and everything and it's like and then they, they automatically take that as like oh what are you going to do when you're when someone's breaking into your house call a call a social worker no yeah do, let me let me go ahead and break this down <laughs> for anybody okay i i, I already do warned, it. break it down because it's i already i already had i already warned chris that i have a whole like rant going yeah. on in my head that i do it <laughs> getting to spit out there defunding the police does not mean getting rid of the police Defunding the police does not mean we don't want police. We want good police. We do not want bad police. We want checks and balances available that are going to hold these people responsible. When we say defund the police, we mean not giving them a gigantic budget to work with to where they can buy SWAT vehicles that only the military should be owning and having to protect in giant cases in case somebody does wind up attacking our country. When we say defund the police, we want people other than police officers that are not trained to deal with the mentally ill or de-escalating to get some of that money. When we say defund the police, we want those to go into social programs to start deterring crime at the root cause, which is kids starting off, they're getting bored, and they've been throughout systemic oppression for years and years and years, which is why you always see predominantly black neighborhoods, predominantly white neighborhoods, predominantly poor neighborhoods. You're going to see people separated and they think they still need to be separated. They do not. Everyone's been held down for way too long and we need to start allocating these funds that the police have been getting for their military toys to go into uh, practices, and groups that are actually going to help people rather than just tossing them in jail. Yeah, I mean, do you think the cops want to have to be be called out to to deal with someone who's mentally ill? They're not equipped for that. No, you know, no. that's I, I was reading not too long ago that there there are a, a lot of cops who don't they don't want to do that stuff. No. You know, and when you say defund no, the police. That that is it's all encompassing. It's not just, you know, take the take away the police force. It is have the police doing what they should be doing, enforcing the law and not all these other things, because they're o- they're overworked and they're underpaid. All that money they get doesn't go in their pockets. It goes to like you said, Andy, to these military toys that they absolutely don't need. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, better <laughs> training. Because there oh, are, you know, training. you watch, oh God, you so watch these videos and these, this toxic masculinity that they exude in now, again, this is a blank statement. It is not, not all, not all cops are like that. Just, this is just what we're seeing in instances and this toxic masculinity that, that's displayed is not okay. 
You don't have yeah. to do it that way. And by the way, you don't need to, to qualify that it's not all cops. Everybody knows that. <laughs> and, and the whole reason we're doing this, because it's like someone had the, the great analogy of, by the way, if, you, if you're rolling your eyes and turning off this podcast now, you are part of the problem. Yeah. Okay. So, geez. Anyway, the yeah, analogy yeah. of, listen, yeah. if, uh, if, there were a bunch, if there were a bunch of pilots crashing planes, it's not all pilots, yeah. but you, you would do something about it. Right. Yeah. If there were if there were ten pilots who decided to crash planes, you would figure this out, and you would or, make sure that doesn't happen anymore. Or 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 an, an, another good analogy along those lines is if there's ten pilots about to crash planes, or to, or like uh, out of ten pilots, like seven are showing up drunk on the job. Yeah, maybe you, you want those other three to speak up. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> you would think so. Yeah, uh, I, I think yeah. you know I, I want to just make a statement that. We we're having this discussion as a discussion. We're yeah. not, you know, we aren't uh, this necessarily a condemning anybody. We're not. This is this is a meant to be a constructive conversation. We are getting out our feelings. We of course always welcome responses. I mean, you can't have direct responses on a podcast, yeah. but you know where to find us. So yeah, we, you know, we always welcome emails. We welcome yeah. Twitter discussions on our Facebook, what, however you want to contact us. Yeah. It, it should be no surprise that we feel this way. I mean, we are, we come, we play music about a show that is very, very clear about being, right. you know, the, the idea rest. of equality and, yes. and living in this quote unquote utopia. But so, you know, we don't just, I mean, we like the show. We love the show. And so obviously we have kind of the same values along that line. So it's no surprise that we're, t we're the, uh, the views that we have, I, w I would think. But I also don't want, um, you know, Jim, like you said, if, if this is too much for you, maybe you're the prop, maybe you're part of the problem, but that's okay because was I, too this strong? Is this, I mean, I don't think yeah, you're too strong at all. Yeah. I think that's, that's, I think that if you hear that, and you're okay hearing that and you want to hear more then that's a step in the right direction. If you just, if you just turn around and leave, well then what are you doing? You're not helping yourself. You're not helping anybody. You're just taking your yeah. viewpoint and hitting the road. That's not helpful. Yeah. And when you talk about like, Star Trek, I always, it, it's not, it's not Gene's vision. It's the, it's that just that Gene Roddenberry quote where he talks about, we will get to the Star Trek future when we're not just embracing and engaging, uh, other cultures and diversity, but celebrating the differences that yeah. we all have. Yeah. And it's, that just says it all. And I don't, if you don't see that, yeah. if you're not, if you don't agree with that, I'm not sure uh, what you, what you're getting out of Star Trek. Right. Yeah. No, one, one, one other point I really wanted to touch on um, was the actual Bell, Bell riots themselves. Mm -hmm. Because that wound up obviously brought about change. It, it was obviously a weird cog along the way. Yeah. The machine that is Starfleet because Starfleet stopped existing because this wasn't, a, wasn't initially going to take place. And everybody right now is complaining that they're tearing down Confederate statues, that people are rioting in the streets and burning buildings down. Which is more important to you, human lives or buildings that can be replaced? Uh, human lives or the statue of a Confederate soldier yeah. that, was put, that was put up during the Jim Crow era, basically as a big fuck you to black people. Yep. In, all over the country. It wasn't even just in the South. We have Confederate monuments here in Indiana. We weren't, we weren't, even, we weren't even part of the Confederacy. Yeah, so there, There's no gray area there. No, there's just not. not. I, if, at all. <laughs> at all. I, I always think, I mean, literally when I was 10 years old on vacation with my family driving through the South, 10 years old in the late seventies. <laughs> and I am, I was, I did not grow up on a hippie commune. Okay. My <laughs> parents are very religious and, and I would see Jefferson Davis highway. I'm like, you know, Hey, wasn't he a traitor? <laughs> why does, why are they celebrating him? If he was fighting against, I, I couldn't process it. And of course, you know, then years later you realize, Oh, it's because the people who wanted are yeah. doing it. It's the big F you that. Yeah. Just said. Newsflash yeah. guys, the Confederacy is not American history. No yeah, Confederacy right. tried to secede from the exactly. union. Exactly. They have no business in American history. Now in the history books. Yes. But in, as yeah. elevated to, you know, memorials and statues. No. Yeah. Wrong. 
So and the, the, you like can the, take your Confederate flag, and which incidentally isn't even the Confederate flag. It's like a it's like a variation on the flag that Lee used. And it's like, oh, right. it's not even the Confederate flag and all these dum dums run around, you know, it's just like, you, it, it really, it's frustrating. <laughs> Clearly. But, but I like I, to, to get back to the show and that concept. I like that, that point you made fart that it's kind of like what it's, it's interesting to think about why this moment, and how it turned things around mm-hmm. and obviously started. And now listen, there was still going to be another 30 years of crap because we see that with Seth from Cochran and in Star Trek first mm-hmm. contact and the, yeah. uh, and the third world war. But I like that it starts pointing at least the U S uh, in the right direction and versus the contrast of it. Like if you, if, you, if this doesn't happen and you just keep going the way you're going, then clearly there's no chance for for that future. Well, that's like that's like the, the greatest thing about these protests. And yeah, you know, not everybody is going to agree with rioting, but sometimes rioting is the it's well, it's the rioting is the, is the is is the voice of the unheard. That's yeah. basically it. That's, and there's yeah. Yeah. numerous occasions in history where rioting and protesting made a huge difference that people a lot of people sometimes tend to forget. But you need to be reminded. March on Washington, 1963, 250,000 people marched on Washington. It's the site of the famous Martin Luther King, I Have I Had a Dream speech. This was brought about because of the lunch counter sit-ins, Selma, the, the Selma protests, uh, police brutality when they were peacefully protesting the streets, dogs sicked on them. This led to the Civil, Act, Civil Rights Act of 1964, and then finally the Voting Rights Act of 65. Uh, the Boston Tea Party... Come on, that was a straight up <laughs> riot. Property was destroyed. <laughs> oh no, what's gonna? What's worse, you know? Uh, the storming of the Bastille in 1789 in France. There was a French prison that was a, that, that Louis the Sixteenth was running, and he was a symbol of the, the like the dictatorship. And finally, the French got sick of it, overthrew him. And then, of course, you know, the Arab Spring, just in 2010, so many dictators wound up getting ousted just because of one dude setting himself on fire because his fruit stand was shut down by the government. And then, of course, wow. we're in June right now. What is June? June is Pride Month. Does anybody remember why we're celebrating Pride? Why it's in June? Because of the Stonewall, Stonewall. riots. Yeah. Police and police went in, raided a, like a gay nightclub and started beating the living shit out of a bunch of trans and gay people. And then the, basically they, they, had, they had enough. They fought back. Rioting and protesting makes a difference. I can't advocate for rioting. However, when you, have, when you are disenfranchised and no one listens to you, no matter Sorry. what you do, it's, it's, it's a natural evolution. Mm-hmm. You know, you... If, if, if someone's, if you're trying to talk to somebody and they're not listening, you yell. And if they're not, if they don't hear, hear you, when you yell, you smack them in the head. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not a good thing, but sometimes it's, it's, it's what, it's what happens. It's, it's just evolves to that point. Yeah. And I, it's, I, I have a, it's, um, I'm very back and forth on that because, I don't think it it solves anything, but it does get attention. And oh, yeah. I think sometimes that it, I mean, I hate to say it, but sometimes I think it's necessary. I, I said it, I said it before, you will not get me to say one bad thing about the, the, the rioting and the, and, yeah. the uh, and the destruction of property and that, because I can't either because it, it had to happen. And again, for I, I've I've said this I've said this for a long time and again it's kind of sad because in it, it, it so many times when this has happened the the, uh, the black communities themselves get uh, get damaged and that's where and that's where the rioting is yeah. happening and so when I when this was happening in Santa Monica at a mall or when they took down that police precinct in Minneapolis. I'm sorry. That was, I, I, that was not a moment of like, oh man, that's too far for me. And I'm going to be real clear about that. And again, the, it, when you're talking about just people busting windows and just being assholes, there's always going to be ten percent of that. Yeah. Okay. And th- but that's the price that's being paid for the deaths of so many people at the hands of the police. It's yeah. really simple. 
and really simple. That, that's that, that's the other thing is that so many people have been like, uh, well, because I'm a sadist and I read the comments on news sites. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So many people are always like, oh, all these all these protesters out there rioting and everything. It's like it's like no 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 no. no. Let me let me go ahead and borrow yeah, one of one of your phrases when it, in regards to the police, where it's like, oh, not all cops. No, not all protesters. Exactly. There's obviously gonna gonna be a few that are just gonna be dickheads and break windows just for the sake of breaking a window or setting a trash can on fire. But a lot of times, you know, people are doing this for a reason because they're being tear gassed for no reason. I've had so many friends oh. who go to protest here in here in Indianapolis, peacefully marching down the street, protesting, not disrupting traffic, not breaking windows or anything, getting get, get, getting tear gassed, getting get, getting rubber bullets shot at them. Well, and it's and like, you, what do you what do you expect them to do? Are they supposed to just not fight back? It's like, oh yeah, please let me just sit here and let my eyes burn and these welts in my body form without being pissed off at you. Well and you notice once the initial conflagration subsides and mm-hmm. you know with the rioting and the protests keep going. Because yeah. the rioting is the initial reaction. That's right. like the breaking right. point. And then after that, you're trying to get to a point where you can heal. And the, the best way to do that and to, to, is to maintain that momentum and to start keep, you know, to, to keep, yeah, start that discussion. Keep, keep in, the, in, in the eyes of the public and in a positive way, continuing to protest like, like is happening is is really the way to inst- to make people hear you and that's the only way to 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 instigate change well and to vote so vote oh, please God, vote yes. for yeah. progressive government that actually wants to change things yeah i mean p- progressive numbnet like no matter whether they're democrat republican or independent there are some progressive republicans out there that will yeah. act, who actually want to make a difference you know so, what? By all I means, do not vote straight ticket. Do some research. Find yeah. out who is actually out there to help you. And that's a really good point because the, the two-party system is stupid. Oh, God. <laughs> and and <laughs> there are people who grow up as Republicans who stay Republicans their whole life because they are Republicans. As, as That's their label. And they aren't, nece- they aren't necessarily – and this goes for Democrats too. And, they, and if you know your history, Democrats basically used to be the Rep- Republicans of today. So it's not about – it's not about the parties and 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 the the labels of Republican or Democrat. It's about the people who want to go in there and instigate change or at least do good. You know, they don't want to just maintain the status quo that's freaking horrible. They want to do good and and work with other people <laughs> to make our society better. And if you vote for someone who doesn't want to do that, like Mitch McConnell. Oh, Listen, I've been saying if, if if you're enabling uh, racist politicians and pundits and policies, you're racist. End of story. Sorry, if you if you support Donald Trump, you're a racist. I know that people are really pissed right now hearing that. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Well, you know, and I you I can't know. support that and and then pretend like that you're not. Here's the th- here's here's my one counter to that. I'm not sorry. I I don't want you to be. My <laughs> one counter to, to that is the people who blindly follow someone and have no idea, like well, that's just clearly aren't happening. paying, it's a, it's aren't paying cool. attention at yeah. all. You that, know that's and, why the conversation is almost pointless at this because you can't yeah. really communicate. It's yeah. blinders and cold. And, well, it's yeah. it's not. I, I don't think it's about not. In a lot of in a lot of instances, it's not about not being able to communicate with somebody because I do believe there are people out there who, if who confronted would at least think, but the uncom it's an uncomfortable conversation, especially within a family, Oh, you know, it's an uncomfortable conversation and it's, it's just a tough subject to broach, you know, especially when someone just doesn't, they're comfortable and they don't want, they just don't want to hear it and they're comfortable with whatever happens. You know, they'll complain at a dinner party, but they're not going to be obsessed over it every day. Like I am, you know, <laughs> I was going to disclose with one, uh, my, one of my favorite moments from the episode is when, uh, and I think it kind of sums up where we are now as a society is when, uh, Julian is talking to the administrative uh, woman, when they're kind of huddled down and being held hostage 
and he says to her that it's not it's not your fault that things are the way they are and then she says you know that's what everybody tells themselves and then nothing ever changes i love that and it's such a i mean god these guys who wrote this and how appropriate is that for us now yeah absolutely perfect but jim that was a great closer for you awesome and a great conversation thank you for joining us having me on you guys uh love talking trek and this is an important episode and it's important time and i think uh we're gonna see things are gonna get better eventually yeah we're working on it it's gonna happen we all gotta do our part we're doing it so Thanks, Jim. Uh, get to work on year five. Okay. See you <laughs> hey, one the way one last time because you know nobody knows who you are oh, or, yeah. or where to get a hold of you. Uh, I am on Twitter at Enterprise yeah. Extra, and I am on Twitter at Trek Ranks. You can hear my podcast at Trek Ranks. It's a podcast about all the things we love about Star Trek. We don't have any negative topics, no worst of, just the best of, no wrong answers, just a celebration of Trek. No positive, Jim. No snark. No snark. We just love it all. Some snark. <laughs> Some snark. Vote of honor. No, not that. <laughs> okay. The drumhead. Yes, that one. Troy has sex with a ghost. <laughs> Another classic. This week's episode of Five Year Mission, the podcast, has been brought to you by Fansense. I know you're used to hearing Andy's voice here, but this week you have me. I don't have a cool jacket or a room full of Fansets collectibles that I can talk about, but I can tell you that Fansets makes a really cool product, and if you haven't gone to their site, you should go check it out. They have all kinds of different pins from a lot of different franchises, like Firefly, Aliens, Harry Potter, obviously Star Trek. They're pretty cool, and a lot of variety, too. It's not real basic stuff, so, I mean, if there's a certain character you like, they probably have it. In July, they have a Jadzia Dax pin. That sounds cool. If I collected pins, I might get that. I'm sure Fark's gonna get it. For this month in June, they've released a Section 31 Georgiou pin, a Season 3 Michael Burnham pin from Discovery, obviously. Next month in July, they have a Wonder Woman pin that looks really cool. So uh, you should head over there and check them out, place an order, and uh, as a reward for being one of our listeners, you can get a discount by uh, using the code 5 Year Mission. That's the number 5 Year Mission. And again, this is an advertisement for... I'm going to try to do the Fark voice here. Ready? Fan sets. Our pins have character. And on behalf of all of the Trek Geeks Network podcasts, we would like to thank Fan Sets for sponsoring our show and all of the other ones. Thanks, guys. have officially launched the Five Year Mission Patreon. On there you can see posts with pictures and videos of behind the scenes shenanigans with the band and the podcast. There are different levels you can sign up for where you'll get exclusive merch and videos and unreleased tracks and demos and other stuff from the band and the podcast that you wouldn't normally get if you didn't follow us on Patreon. The different tiers you get to choose from go from Ensign all the way up to Admiral, and one of the perks of being an Admiral is that you get to be a producer on this podcast. This week's producers are Neil Carpenter, Debbie Rinke, Helen Lake, Carol Jones, Steve and Frankie Palopoli, Madison Rachel Jones, Becky and Roxy, and of course, Jim Morehouse. So head over to the 5-Year Mission Patreon right now and sign up as an admiral, and your name could be listed at the end of the next episode of 5-Year Mission, the podcast. Just go to patreon.com slash 5-Year Mission. That's the number 5-Year Mission. So that was our conversation with Jim Morehouse, a good friend of ours. We were talking always about, good. yeah, it's always, it's always fun to have Jim on. Uh, we've had him on once before, haven't we? I don't think yeah. I was yeah. on that podcast, though. No, I don't think I was, but, uh, you know, talking about past tense, um, you know, Jim is so knowledgeable about Trek, you know, just Trek in general, but deep space. Nice. Yeah. Especially. Yeah. So it's always fun to, to talk to him, not just cause he's our friend, but just because he knows what he's talking about. And he has really, uh, 
he's got a lot of insight, but also for this particular episode mm -hmm. and you know, the, the plan we had for it and relating it to what's, what's going on in our world. Um, Jim was perfect because, uh, he's also very, you know, like, like we are, he's, he's rather political and, and mm -hmm. outspoken and, and isn't afraid to share his opinions. Yeah. So we're really glad to have had him on again. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to be doing more episodes like this in the, in the near, near future. Most of what we've done thus far has been, uh, you know, it, it's just been pretty lighthearted and, and we've talked about a lot of stuff. Um, I think we got a little political when we had, uh, um, John, John Billingsley. Yeah. John Billingsley on, John. which, which was great. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're, we just want to be a little more socially conscious. I think for, just do kind of a, not, not forever, no. but it's, 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 it's a good time to do that. And, and so we'll have a few more of these. There are episodes that we, that we can do that can relate to social issues that we would like to do. So, you know, Keep keep an eye on that out for that. We may not do them all all in a, a series necessarily, but we will call them a series as we as we go through yeah. and, and do these. Yeah. We can't be all serious all the time. No, because that's definitely not our personality. No, we're five year mission. Mostly serious, always yeah. personality. That's There's right. That's <laughs> horrible. <laughs> So that that's uh, that's this this week's episode. Um, we'll be uh, back at you in a couple of weeks. Yay! And, uh, yay! Yeah, we're we're back in the saddle, or something. We'll cover that. Here, any uh, any final words, Clark? Live long and don't be a dick. That's, that, I think that's a good that's a good sign off. A little that's a, good, a little a little Spock Wheaton combo there. That's right. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Five Your Mission, the podcast. If any of you are interested in listening to more of our music, you can check us out on YouTube or Spotify or iTunes or pretty much anywhere that you can listen to music. Just search for Five Year Mission and we should be the first thing that comes up. If you would like to contact us in regards to the podcast or anything else that you want to talk to us about, you can email us at fiveyearmissionband at gmail.com. And for more information about the band, you can go to fiveyearmission.net. And also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.